welcome to my this is not a vlog vlog well just a brief update and a few things i wanted to talk to you guys about well i had a pretty good little time this afternoon i went up to the cigar store with my little uh roy Por ultra portable typewriter and i typed out a one pretty good piece and i had a good time with it and i uh, actually enjoyed some of the reactions i got from the people at the cigar store about this ultra portable typewriter it was a uh, a lot of fun seeing their reaction of course you know anybody that brings in a typewriter is going to be different anyways but uh, just a few things I wanted to update you guys about first of all I'm really uh, been bad about writing back updating my mailing list and writing letters back to people who've written me and I'm really behind the curve in that regard first of all I wanted to acknowledge that uh, I got a pen pal bill from Encinitas California and he sent me uh, one letter a while back in April, and now he has sent me a pack of typing paper. And this is the Quill typing paper I'm going to try out. Thank you very much, uh, Bill. I'm definitely going to have fun trying that out. Then I have a friend, Sean, in, uh, back in Pennsylvania. Uh, I got your letter a while back, Sean, I, uh, in May, and... Uh, I'm going to write you back, I promise, but uh, just acknowledge I got your letter for sure. And not to be forgotten, not to be left off the list, of course, is my friend, the right Reverend Ted Monk over in Phoenix, Arizona. I got your package a while back, and I'm definitely going to be writing you back for sure. So I got some pen pals that need some attention, and maybe I'll, I'll sit down on uh, Adobe Rose over there and uh, bang out uh, some missives, huh? Now here's something that I've been meaning to uh, do a, a video about, a review about, for quite a while and I haven't done it. And so I got, uh, I ordered a zine from Vanessa Berry in Australia. Got a package from her a while back. This one zine called I Am A Camera. And uh, I love this zine and I love the way she does these and I've been meaning to do a kind of a zine review. I've never done one of these before and actually um, I really feel like I should probably order another one, another zine, a different volume or different edition from her just to get more of a sense of what's going on with her creative work. But she's a fantastic writer, creator, zine maker, and she's been instrumental in the Australian zine movement for years. So that's really been important, and I'm really behind in, in getting that review done. But I, I think I'm just going to order another one of her zines, first of all. And so this last Sunday, I attended a uh, local meeting of uh, film photographers, and uh, I was gifted this uh, Voigtlander Vitomatic 2 camera, which you might have seen me show you on, on a previous video. I'm using the half case, the bottom half case it came with, and it had a couple little ragged torn leather straps and I took those off and I put on my sailor strap this uh, greenish braided nautical rope sailor strap and now I have a roll of Kentmere 100 that I've uh, put in here and I'm starting to shoot it and uh, starting to get a hang of this camera I did have to go online and find a manual for it just to know exactly how to uh, advance the film uh, because there's actually a film counter on the bottom of the camera that's visible through a window in the bottom case and all that so I'm this is not really a review of the camera but as Ted over in Arizona says yes I am a camera fondler but uh the viewfinder on this is wonderful. This is a one-to-one -one viewfinder, meaning if I leave my eye open and just hold it up, I just see right through it. But superimposed on my view of my right eye is a frame line and a rangefinder patch. So literally, it's just out there. It's just a window. It's beautiful. You probably can't see that, but hey, look at that. Isn't that cool? See, it's a one-to-one -one viewfinder. So anyways, with this new strap on it, a really cool camera and I got a roll of film in there we'll see how it works well I've been uh, playing around a lot with the Roy ultra portable typewriter since I got it about a week or two ago and of course that's typical of us uh, typewriter fanatics or any kind of a fanatic is uh, you get a new toy and you want to play with it but uh, so it is an ultra portable of course and it's not uh, the perfect typewriter in this compared to the best mechanical typewriters because as you know there's always compromises when you're talking about uh, ultra portable typewriters but one of the 
good things about having an ultra portable typewriter is after you've been mess messing with it for a while and then you break out the Royal Quiet Deluxe Adobe Rose this thing types so nicely so if nothing else having an ultra portable typewriter that may be less than ideal it, if nothing else it reminds you of how good the other typewriters in your collection can be and that's a good thing, right? It's a great thing. There is a compromise made in the design of the machines in order to make them light, small, and portable. So we can appreciate that, and we can also appreciate machines like this that are just so well built. So one thing that's been on my mind this last week or so is uh, Ted Monk over in Arizona wrote a great blog article on his blog about the typosphere and blogging in general. And it seems it's just a trend on the internet that blogging has in decline. That's just a fact. But uh, he was kind of simultaneously lamenting the decline of typewriter blogging and also kind of a call to action for a lot of us bloggers to maybe consider uh, becoming a little more active in our blogs. And what's encouraging, though, is there are a lot of new typewriter bloggers, and I welcome all you guys to the typosphere, and I hope you have great success in, in uh, interacting with the larger community of typewriter adepts. But myself, I've been blogging for years, but I know that since this channel has gained more of my uh, creative attention, I have let my blog kind of become a secondary, uh, a secondary interest. I usually will I'll post you know, an advertisement about a video on my blog, but I'm not, I'm rarely uh, composing really good new content on my blog. And so this is kind of the, some of the stuff I was writing about today when my, on my Roy typewriter up at the cigar store. But uh, I really think that I want to um, commit myself to blogging more often, and it might involve not being quite as uh, in-depth, like not necessarily long, detailed essays, but it might involve more quick, shorter articles uh, just to get uh, volume out and to get um, more updates more often. But really, it's, there's a lot of times I'll have some little thought. It may not be enough of a thought or I haven't spent enough time on it to work it into a, a full-blown essay of some kind, but it's still worth uh, throwing out there. And so I might be doing more of these little just parenthetical little ideas, little observations, little snippets, more like shorter little parenthetical kind of blog articles. And uh, that's what I hope to do in the future. And that also involves um, streamlining my blogging process to make it a little more quick. I still want to do to focus my blog on typewriter blogging, type casting, but I want to streamline it and do things I need to build a copy stand. Uh, the scanner back there, uh, flatbed scanner, it's just a kind of a hassle to have to fire it up whenever I want to input a, uh, a typewritten piece. And if I can shoot a, a picture of it on my uh, mobile device or on a, my digital camera and then using a copy stand, it would be better. Uh, that's the biggest uh, a drawback I've seen thus far in, in trying to do impromptu photographs of my uh, typewritten work for blogs is you need really even light and if it looks even to your eye by the time you increase the contrast curve in post-processing to make it a little more readable you're going to accentuate any differences in brightness and in, in, on the page so you really need a super even lighting and uh, so that's what I need to work on, a little bit of that, a little bit of streamlining my process. As you might know, I typically shoot video on uh, Panasonic Lumix Micro Four Thirds cameras, but what I'm shooting with right here is a camcorder. And I have a wide angle lens on it, so I get more of this wide look in my office without having to get all the way back. But it's not nearly the same video quality. There is noise in the shadows at night, and uh, it doesn't have the narrow depth of focus of a larger sensor camera, but I am interested in using it. And so you might see some video from this camera that might not be quite as sharp other, as it otherwise would be. And uh, be patient with me. I'm working through the process of working with different kinds of cameras here, so I'm interested in using this for a while. But anyways, this is Joe Van Cleve, just a brief uh, update, and uh, yeah, this is not a vlog. 
you guys have yourselves a great day.